and welcome to our Business Network Live digital special um, in conversation with series. Um, my name is Hazel Horaki and I am head of salon groups at Weller Professionals and I am absolutely stoked to be able to introduce today um, a man who is the managing director of a six salon group from Scotland, Colin McAndrew, and he's also our Weller Creative Style Director. Um, and today we're really lucky we're going to be joined also by Kate Hermson, who is director at one of the six salons from Medusa. So we really hope you enjoy this digital special and I would like to now um, ask Colin to join us. Colin, are you there? Hi Hazel, thank you. How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad. Like I said to you yesterday, you know, very British thing to say, yes, everything's fine. It's not so fine at the moment, but we still say yeah. everything's good and we're going to try and bring the positivity in this um, in conversation with you today. So thanks so much for joining us. I think we're also going to introduce Kate. So Kate, are you there? Hiya. Hi, Kate. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Thank you. It's great to have morning, you guys Kate. with us today. Morning. So we're going to get through some, uh, we're just going to have a conversation really today about all the things that are on our mind, because yet again, I hate to use that phrase all the time, but the new normal is changing yet again for us. Uh, obviously, the UK is going into lockdown on Thursday. Um, Wales and Ireland have already gone into lockdown and our salons have closed. It is a really tragic, tough time at the moment. Um, but we do want to talk about today, like, what can we do positively and how can we think positively about what's going on and try and influence the things that we can influence because we just feel so out of control sometimes in this situation. We just feel like we're going a bit backwards, especially here. Um, so it'd be great, you guys are living it every day in salon, um, like majority of our salon partners. So it'd be really good today if we um, just have a chat about that and see where your heads are at. Colin, from a managing director's point of view, I know you work in the salon one day a week, but also for you, Kate, you know, as a director in one of the salons, you're seeing clients every single day um, and where are your head at on some of the topics that we're going to talk through today. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, yeah I'm looking good. forward to it. Cool, good. So what I'd love to kick off with is the L word and talking to you really, Colin, starting with you on what were your learns from, you know, phase one lockdown that we have that we can start to implement now for lockdown two that, like I said, is, is happening in the next few days in the UK and is already happening in Ireland and Wales and probably will happen in Scotland at some point. Yeah, I mean, you know, as we're sort of recording, England, Wales and Northern Ireland um, and Republic of Ireland are, are all in lockdown now, or England will be in a couple of days, it's been announced. Scotland has, you know, we've, we've had quite strict um, procedures in place already. Um, you know, the loss of hospitality for about the last three or four weeks, which has had a real sort of knock on confidence you know, for, for clients to come in. So it's been a real challenge. I think one of the sort of 
key learns or a few key learns is, you know, at least this time we, we sort of know what it looks like. You know, last time it was like, um, it was just panic and we didn't know what the support was going to be. I've seen Boris Johnson um, has said that furlough is going to be extended and stuff. So there's a lot more confidence about the, the team stability and stuff, you know, from my point of view, which is going to take away so much stress, which is um, fantastic. And I think also just what we learned in the in the previous lockdown was to sort of have that constant engagement, like not not overkill, but just to make sure that we, you know, I think I said during lockdown, my, my role is to take the stress off the team and to sort of allow them to look after themselves during this situation. And I think it's just the exact same. It's, you know, nothing's changed from that. I think there's less panic about this lockdown. I think we understand it a little better. I think we can see that if this works out well, then we will probably benefit in terms of December trade and stuff. So actually, I think it's much more like, right, okay, relax, control what you can control, uh, communicate really effectively with your team and with your clients. And I have to say as well, you know, and I'm sure it goes across the UK uh, and Ireland that, you know, my, my team have been fantastic coming back and it feels such a shame for us to be sort of operating under that cloud of constant fear. Um, but my team and the way the clients have responded has been fantastic. So I think it's just sort of tr my, my personal thing is I'm just going to be trying really relax about it and just actually work out what I need to do, communicate with the client of what we will do when we reopen, because obviously we were pretty busy in December already. That's a, a slight concern, you know, how do you fit, fit in a month's worth of business into traditionally the busiest month of the year? So I need to sort of work out with the management, with the team, what we can actually do, but also still to make sure we're as safe as we have been. Yeah. You know, I think that's still sort of paramount. It's so difficult. Um, but, like I said, I think it's much less panic. It's much more, okay, take it, roll with it, go with the flow a little bit. And again, you know, operating as we've operated for, you know, since uh, since the lockdown ended has been incredibly stressful for everybody. Yeah. You know, for management, for the team, for clients, it's been such a challenge that actually having three or four weeks off to me right now feels okay. Yeah. You know, I'm quite looking forward to just sort of resetting again. Yeah. And you're kind of that way though anyway, Colin, aren't you? You're quite, not chilled, but you, you do kind of roll with the punches. That's your kind of personality type. Like, Kate, would you say that you're the same? Because everyone experiences this in a different way. You know, a lot of people have anxiety and things like that. Like, how are you feeling about possibly a second lockdown and, you know, what you learned from the first one that you can use if we get if you get locked down again in Scotland yeah I mean like Colin said at the beginning there was that initial panic and there was a lot of kind of unknown about what was going to happen and it's funny as well because when we first went into lockdown we were all like oh we'll see you in two weeks you know it's not going to be that long and next thing you know it's four months later and you're back in the salon and I have to admit when we first came back there was a level of anxiety because you're kind of thinking about how you're going to make yourself safe, your team safe, and most importantly, your clients. So it's making sure that you have everybody's best interests at heart at the same time. I think if we were to go into another lockdown, it wouldn't be as difficult as what it was previously. And I think as well, Colin, throughout our lockdown experience, he kept in touch with us. You know, we had weekly video chats, which actually he's still doing now to keep us all updated. We've never been in the dark about anything. And he's always been really honest and upfront about what's going to happen, what he doesn't know, what he does know. So that was really good in terms of keeping us all in the loop, making sure that we understood everything. And it did kind of help us to get through and think, right, OK, yeah, we can get through this. So I think we're strong enough. We'll get through it again if it does happen. Um, and everybody's just in the same boat, aren't they? So you have to remember that you're fortunate and fortunate enough that, you know, we're luckily we're still going to have a job at the end of it. We're still yeah, going to be, right. if not, we'll probably come back stronger than ever. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. I've seen that on Instagram a lot, actually. We're not all in the same boat, but we're all in the same storm. And it's yeah. it's so true. We're all in this storm and it picks up and then it settles a bit and then it goes crazy again. And that's how it basically feels. And we have to weather that storm. And it sounds like what you guys are doing is the right thing and staying in contact is a really important part, I think. And like we were talking about before, Colin, before, you know, I remember hearing the first time the word furlough was used. And I was kind of like, how do you even spell furlough? I don't even, I've never heard that term before. And then it was all these rules around how you can keep in contact with people. Can't you keep in contact with people? And I think, like you said, we kind of know what we're allowed to do now and what yeah. we can't and how important it is to keep Kate and the rest of the team, you know, in the know of what, what's going on and taking that burden on yourself. So I think that's so important for salon owners to try and, not take the burden, but just try and lead again on this is what's going on. There is an update and you've been doing that a lot, haven't you, Colin? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, just to touch on that furlough thing, you know, like everybody in the UK, until 22nd of March, not one of us knew what furlough meant. I thought it was something to do with horse racing. Exactly. And, um, you know, but, you know, and then it was so alarming. You know, this is the rules. And, you know, I was petrified to sort of engage the team in a way that could be constructed as they were working. Yeah. And as you get your head around it, that relaxes a little bit. And certainly, if there's a future lockdown, I, I, I sort of already know how, what we can do and what we can't do. Yeah. Um, but in terms of the sort of communication with the team, I just think it's so important. You know, like, there was so many shocking headlines, you know, from, you know, like, the media have to take so much responsibility because they are the ones who are affecting people's mental health. Yeah. It's not the salon owners, it's not, you know, it's, it's not anything, it's the bloody media getting things so wrong just for a, any reason. Yeah. And, you know, what, what, what I tried to sort of do was just, you know, as the employer, as the sort of decision maker, is, is just really make people aware that there's no point listening to the sort of equivalent of the guy down the pub. You know, it doesn't matter if you have an opinion because we're going to do what what I learn and what, what my experts, you know, my accountants, my HR people, what they tell me is what we're going to be taking the judgment from. Yeah. So again, it was it was just so important to sort of I, I sort of became more active on videos to the team when I felt there was real sort of negative sort of stories out there. I wanted to sort of try and shut them down yeah. to make that the is. team relax, you know, just to try and sort of, um, you know, I, th I think the team know I'm pretty calm. You know, I don't, I don't lose it very often. Uh, like you said, I sort of roll with it. And I think you have to, otherwise you'd be in an early grade. But... I think, you know, for me, it was just that I, I used that sort of influence to sort of try and be the, the calm feature um, yeah. it, in their sort of work life outside to not being allowed in the salons, you know? Yeah, yeah. To try and provide the balance, I guess, to, I guess, to all this sensationalism that's out there, which, yeah, it's constant. 100%. That's, that's, that's what they do, right? That's, yeah. their, that's their job. Yeah, how they sell papers, I get it, but it, it just wasn't helpful. <laughs> no, absolutely, totally agree. So talking about things that maybe were more helpful, so like the government schemes, I know they're extending um, furlough here, we haven't got the exact details, but you know, was this something that you felt was really supported your business and helped you get through to where you are now um, or, and will hopefully help see you through another lockdown too? Or is, was there anything else the government could have done or that you've done? to help you get through this from a financial point of view, Colin, because, you know, this it, it's serious. We've seen already about 10% of salons close. You know, we all worry about how many more salons won't get through a lockdown too. Um, so, yeah, if you could give us any ideas. Yeah, I mean, we, we uh, you know, as a company, we were just incredibly fortunate that um, outside the company, there was a, another sort of business deal going, going ahead that just, Gave, gave, gave us access to strong funds, you know. So we were, the week prior to lockdown, I told the team that we were okay for sort of three or four months uh, in terms of covering wages. But that was going to jeopardise a, a deal I'd been working on for years. Mm. Uh, and as it was, because of the government support, it allowed me to support the team and still do the sort of the business deal that I wanted to do. So for us, you know, the... 
you know, I, I, I don't mean this like literally as in they saved us, but they just made things so much easier. Um, you know, rather than us go back five years, they kept us on the sort of business plan, albeit it's changed the course of how we trade now and stuff. But, you know, um, I can't thank the government enough for the job retention scheme. You know, I think it was absolutely amazing. The the main point that I think I'm I'm joined by a lot of hairdressers about this, certainly looking at social media, is at the start of lockdown we were classed as hospitality, you know, and then when the when the VAT announcement for the reduction in VAT from from the government, we were not classed as hospitality and we were put into normal retail. I think you can't chop and choose. You have to put us in one area. Brilliant. And I would certainly say that our service is very hospitable. Um, and for a long time, way before this, I've constantly been on about we need to reduce the VAT on something that is so service laden. You know, the, the cost of sales are different from retail, etc. Our biggest cost is wages. You know, anything between 45 to 55 percent, which we can't claim VAT back on. And that's why um, I think the government really has to step up. And, you know, for a day or so, the hairdressing industry really stepped up with uh, Chop the Vat, which was a, a good campaign. Yeah. But maybe it's not sexy enough. Maybe it's a bit boring. Maybe it only sort of affects business owners. But then it just disappeared. You know, there's people with thousands of followers who, you know, they've got 300 likes for sharing that as opposed to a thousand likes for something irrelevant. And this really would secure the future of so many salon businesses and so many team members. You know, like this is huge. And, you know, I, I would urge the, the, the product companies to really get behind this. And I think um, we have a bigger voice if we all sort of actively go to this together. So, you know, I, I'm still going to be focusing on uh, chop the VAT. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen that all over Instagram. Cut the VAT, yeah. Yeah, we've seen that all over Instagram as well, the whole chop the VAT. And there is that petition there. That it, it, There is a petition for people to sign. It's just they yeah. need to do that and they need to sign yeah. it. If they feel passionately about it like you do, then they, they need to do that. So, yeah. um, but it sounds like you feel like the government did support you to a point where you know you were able to open again and be financially viable still as a business um and also yeah. you know bring people like kate back and everybody else because i think you've got a team about of, of 80 people colin is it about yeah. 80 yeah yeah so and you know they've all got mortgages to pay kate right and, and all that kind of thing and when you're out of the salon you know i had a lot of people say to me you know and all those people who are furloughed just at home enjoying the summer sun it, it wasn't like that was it when you were at home it it, it was it was anxious you didn't know whether you were going to come back to a job you know yeah definitely I think as well like when you kind of think about it the first couple of weeks were fine but then when you started to get deeper into the lockdown I think with our job being such a sociable job as well you've gone from speaking to like 30 40 clients a week to speaking to just your other half or your mum on FaceTime and it's difficult to kind of keep that social interaction together especially being in such a social job um, so with regards to kind of that aspect of things it was a case of you know we would have team chats Colin would send us video messages and um, there was actually one point during lockdown where Colin got all the team pizzas so it really lifted everybody's spirits and even though we couldn't all be together as a team we were all there as a team celebrating yeah. and you know just having a nice time while all this other stuff is going on that's not very nice. Yeah, trying to keep that team ethos going. And if we can talk a little bit about your ethoses that you use within Medusa, I've heard all about this be, be a pirate and I wanted to get into that a little bit. And Kate's impression, what, what does that mean day to day being a stylist in the Medusa group? But Colin also, what is the vision of being a stylist? What is that of being a stylist, being a pirate? What is that all about? So I'm... Um... It, it, it came about, you know, uh, after a, a huge success. We just won uh, the Fellowship Salon Group of the Year in the later part of the year. And I think whenever there's sort of huge success, I, I always, rather than sort of get a lot from it, I get quite panicky by it. So 
So I sort of think, right, well, what do we do next time? Um, and it just so happened randomly, I sort of got recommended a book from someone. And, but I've never read a book so much that really sort of connected with my ethos of how I try and operate as, as a sort of businessman. And, you know, my, my business sort of thing and, you know, my, my account managers and Wella hope would back me up when we do negotiations and stuff. But I think everything has to feel that when I say I, I mean Medusa. So Medusa can win, but it should never be at the expense of Kate. You know, we should both be able to go, that's good for Medusa and it's good for Kate. And that just makes sort of everything together. So there's lots of philosophies about pirates, which people won't know. You know, they were the first gender neutral company in the world. And, you know, they, they didn't care if you were a female, male, gay, straight, black, white, pink, purple, whatever. They just, they were totally inclusive. They also had this amazing thing of, uh, they were the first cooperative in the world. And you can actually, you know, go back and look at cooperatives and they all come from a Welsh pirate. Um, and basically it was just that whole thing of taking care of each other. So, you know, they had a proper insurance system on the boats, you know, that if you lost a limb, you were given X amount. Um, and the, the best pirate captains were given a share of the loot. You know, so they never got it all, you know, it was divided, you know, so they might get 50% of it and stuff. And I just love that whole thing. I love the, I love the idea of being able to look at every day in my company and say, I feel like I'm doing the best for you. I think you're doing the best for me. So I'm quite happy. Um, and then just to sort of try and do things differently. So the, the main thing that we, we tried to sort of instigate and I would, uh, you know, I'm not saying we've got it right every time. Please don't think that I'm saying, you know, we've got the best company in the world or anything. But what, what we tried to do is we sort of realised that some things we were talking about what we wanted rather than what was in it for the team member. So we've pretty much done a whole 360. Everything was like, if you do this, then this is what you get. If we achieve this, this is what you get. You know, so we really made it focused on the sort of benefits and bonuses and commissions to the team members. Um, and it just gave us a sort of different voice to speak to the team. You know, that's that's pretty much it. But it's I'd, I'd encourage everybody to read the book. So it feels like it's all about win-win, basically. And we talk about that okay. ourselves a lot. You know, where's the win-win? How do our sounds win? But also as a partner, we win as well, because unless you guys are winning. We're not winning as well. Uh. Same for Kate. Unless Medusa as a group is winning, she's not winning either. So it just feels like that's where you're trying to get to. And if you, if you can do that, you get people's buy-in, right? Um, Kate, I don't know if you, you agree. That's oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think as well, it's allowed me to become a better stylist. Like, you're communicating with your team more. You're communicating with your managers, your bosses. Everybody's equal in that sense, you know. I think as well, it's opened a lot of doors for me. So being able to do something like this is fantastic and um, recently being promoted. So it's allowed me to kind of be the best that I can be while still having that ethos in the background. Yeah, and congratulations on that because, you know, in these difficult times, it is hard, Colin, right? To retain fantastic talent like you've got within, yeah. within your salon. And, and it's the same facing all salon owners out there. How do we retain them? And how do we make sure that we can promote you guys? And, and it seems like, Kate, that's happened for you, even in these really trying times. So it must feel really great. Oh, yeah, it feels amazing. It does. It feels really good. Um, and I think as well, going that one step further and having the promotion, it's kind of put a bit more confidence in me. I'm thinking, right, yeah, I can do this. It's it's all going to be OK. Amazing. I, I mean, Kate, Kate just got promoted last week. You know, like we, we spoke on Wednesday, first day it was. Um, and Kate Blesser sort of done the, oh, I'm not sure if I'm ready. You know, like, oh, do you think I can do it? And it was like, I'm going to show you that you're doing it. So I was able to just show Kate her sort of micro business within some of her fantastic hairdressers. And, and I think it's just given her the total confidence to go, oh, okay, I deserve this. You know, like, and I think that was so powerful. And, and it's so, I think, important in this, challenging time that you know Kate was brilliant at the start of the year 
through no fault of her own, her business has shifted and she's been brilliant since we came back. So why would we not sort of promote and celebrate that, you know, even though it's a challenging time? And, and again, it's a win-win. You know, um, the salon has a stylist who's hopefully feeling valued. We start charging more. And it means that Kate has the opportunity to earn even better salary. So, you know, again, that whole circle is we, you know, every day sort of benefit. Yeah. Um, and even the clients, because the clients can see Kate's journey from a stylist, in fact, from a graduate stylist, you know, because she finished her training with us, up to a director, you know, like that doesn't happen just because. It happens because Kate puts everything into what she does. You know, she's one of the best retailers in the company. Um, I think you've won Retailer of the Year the last two or three years. Retailer of the Year, three years in a row. Stylist yeah. of the Year, three years in a row. Yeah. It's amazing. So, you know, it, it's like, you know, you're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's interesting, though, that you mentioned about that whole, like, can, but can I do it? Because in, in these times, now, even though you're told you're being promoted and you're, and you're doing a great job, we all suffer a little bit sometimes from that, like, imposter syndrome, where you're like, but am I good? Am I? Can I do it? And it's like, yes, you can. So it's great that you've got, you know, a leader who's saying, you can do this. And that's why you're getting this recognition. And yeah, it's great for all the other people within within your group, right, to look to people like you, Kate, to say, look, if, if you do these things, this is what happens with your career here at Medusa. And I think that's so important. Oh, definitely. And I look at people that are higher up than me or are now at director, and they were kind of my inspiration. So looking at what they'd achieved and how far they'd come as well, um, so it's nice to have some good news in these bad times. In these well done. Trying times, let's call them. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, Christmas. So obviously over here, we are hoping to reopen at the beginning of December. Um, and what's Christmas going to look like? You know, when we talk about things like retail, you know, that you were saying, Kate, that you're great at and that you really embrace and it's an important part of your customer journey. You know, what is Christmas going to look like if we do over here get to open up again in December, you know, from a retail point of view, from a treatments point of view, you know, you're going to be stacked out probably with customers working long hours again. You know, what, what, how do you think it's going to look UK especially, and for Ireland and Wales when they reopen, hopefully for the Christmas period. Is that to me or to Kate? I was going to ask Kate actually and just see, like, because when you reopened before, obviously it was, you were super busy, right? We had two, three oh, yeah. weeks of there, it's just manic. And obviously you got, you're fantastic at retail and, you know, we hear all the time at the moment how difficult retail is. So what, what were you doing, Kate, and what will you do if you guys do go into a lockdown and reopen in December? You'll have a finite amount of time. H how, how do you become, how are you retail of the year, you know, three years in a row and still probably doing it now, I'd imagine? So I think for me, in terms of retail, it's not a case of selling to a client. It's more educating the client. So I was lucky enough a couple of years ago to go on the Well of Hairology course. And that really opens my eyes to the technology behind the products and behind the hair how the hair skin works you know we have mark blake the trichologist come in and speak to us about you know hair transplants and the actual in-depth detail of hair and i think i took a lot of that away back to the salon and it kind of i think for medusa and for me as a hairstylist i want my clients hair to look great when she leaves the salon but i also still want it to look even more amazing when she's able to do it at home and use the products at home and be able to style her hair at home so care in the salon it goes way beyond just the appointment in the chair it's about kind of educating your client on what you would use why you would use it how you would use it why it would benefit the client in general so i think kind of coming into christmas you're going to have quite a few clients especially in the winter months your hair does get drier so yet yeah, treatments will definitely be more important to keep you know, keep your clients using, making sure that they're using the right products for their hair type. And I think me as a stylist, I could never sell something or, you know, promote something to a client that I personally do not like. So it's all about kind of something that works for you, works for the client and also maintenance of the client as well. So I think, yeah, definitely coming into Christmas, we'll work harder. I mean, when we first came back from the initial lockdown, we were doing 12 hour days of alternate days. So we were really working hard to make sure that 
we were kind of getting through the backlog of clients over those four or five months. And if we need to do it again, we'll do it again. I'm sure I speak for kind of most of Medusa when I say that we'll do everything in our power to make sure that we're working together, we're doing everything the best we can for the company and for ourselves um, and also for our clients. Yeah. And you weren't, I guess, letting those niggles of, oh, my client might not be able to afford this now get in the way of your recommendation or the fact that you were squeezed for time because you were seeing so many clients every day. You'd always find the time right when you're doing their blow dryer, their cup to talk to them about or recommend. And from an expertise point of view, it sounds like to me. And we all want to be told, like, tell me what's good for my hair. You're the expert, right? Yeah, exactly. And that's why I think education comes a lot into that, because I could say to you, oh, this is a shampoo, it's going to keep your colour lasting longer. But then you need to kind of delve into why it's going to keep your colour lasting longer, how it's going to keep your colour lasting longer, the sulfates, the par- the content of the actual product, and how it's going to benefit your client. So it's kind of, although the client may not be able to afford it, then you've planted that seed, and you can write it down for them or give them a sample and say, try it at home, see how you feel, you know, you know where we are if you need to come back in and get it again. So for me, it's a case of I don't push anything on a client. I'm very kind of open and honest and I'm kind of like, this is what I would use. This is how I would use it. Um, you know, something to think about for the future if they don't decide to buy it on the day. And I think that's a nice pitch to have because it's not too pushy. You're not forcing it on your client and your clients going home and feeling they're here and then going to try the samples and they're thinking, yeah, actually, that does feel really good. So yeah. they're more likely to come back and and take that product next time they're in the salon um, after using it at home themselves and seeing it for themselves as well. Because it sounds like, yeah, it's the education that sets you apart from maybe other stylists and the way that they're trying to recommend. You're trying to do it from an area of expertise. And then when you give them the sample, they go home, they go, God, she really knew what she was talking about. This product's transformed my hair. And it comes from, from that area of expertise rather than take these products home, they'll stop your color fading. <laughs> I think, um, I think and- also, I think also as well, you know, because I, I work only one position opposite Kate when, I, when, when, I, when I'm in the salon. And it's consistency. You know, she, she never sells a hot deal. She just solves the problem, you know, and she never takes it personally. You know, she, she does phenomenal retail sales. But, you know, if every single person bought from her, it would be even bigger. But she just never takes it personally. Too many hairdressers are intimidated by this little word called no. No. And, you know, Kate, Kate will hear 10 no's a day. But she'll still constantly just go, there's my advice, there's my advice, there's my... And it's that consistency that, that sort of has obviously made her retail every year for three years. You know, it's, it's phenomenal. Yeah. And it is that negative chat again in people's head, isn't it? Thinking this client's going to probably say no. She'll probably say, well, unless you tell her, then she she can't say no. So just, you know, give it a go and do it. And we got some data a couple of weeks ago saying that actually 40% of clients' income has pretty much stayed the same during um, these times. And 20% of people, nearly, I think it's 19%, have actually got more disposable income. You know, if we're going into lockdown, I'm not going to have to pay my gym membership next week or for the next four weeks. You know, that's a significant amount of money. And when I'm next in the salon, I may want to treat myself. So I think it's trying to keep those positive things in your head rather than she might say no and she probably can't afford it and maybe she's lost her job. You know, so yeah, so like, you know, we can never judge what a client can afford to spend. Our duty it's just to make sure that we give them the right advice, you know. And like I said, not to take that word no so personally and so tragically, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, when we when we reopened, and certainly during the sort of tail end of lockdown, we really promoted, uh, and it was something from um, that I'd seen Rob Eaton discuss uh, on one of the Wella chats, you know, which was brilliant because. I felt Wella's interaction during lockdown one was brilliant, how quickly we went from beautiful studios to low tech, <laughs> you know, technology, but it was perfect. It's what we needed. Um, and it was really good. And like I said, so I'd watched Rob do one of the chats. I think I'd done the one the week after or something. And he had this throwaway sentence of like, let's have a no judgment policy. And I spoke to Rob, and I don't think it became anything huge in there in his brain, but for me, it totally resonated. You know, I completely, it, I caught it, you know, like I really got, and we promoted it a lot on social media. 
and our interaction when we've done these no-judgment policies. So that was basically, we don't care if you've cut your fringe, we don't care if you've tried to colour it at home. Uh, the interactions and the feedback from clients was brilliant. And then, you know, so many of my clients, because I've done, for the first six weeks or so, I've done the exact same hours as the team, you know, so if we were in four days a week, I was in four days a week to clients as well. And uh, the amount of clients who said, oh, you can't say that to me, Colin, you know, it's no judgment policy, you know, because I, I know my clients, you know, we have fans yeah, yeah, and yeah. stuff. And they were like, oh, no, 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 I've seen your social media, you know, it's no judgment. And you're like, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that was massive for us. And I think it, it, it set maybe the tone for the team of sort of, you know, I mean, I mean, I was quite clear right at the beginning that nobody in Medusa would be held responsible for getting something wrong, you know, with these new procedures. You know, like, I think it was really important to to sort of, you know, we were all working in a heightened um, situation and environment. And, and it was quite challenging, you know, it, it, and it still is, you know, we, we still... But I was also sort of aware that human error just you know our social interactions like Kate said earlier you know we're so focused on being close to each other and communicating that you know I wasn't going to be the boss who went crazy at somebody for being one and a half meters together rather than two meters for example you know and and again you know just everything just to try and calm it down because when we reopen as a business, you know, we, we lost our unique selling points. You know, it doesn't matter if you were Pyram, what's it, Pyram High, sell them Low type yeah. style. Stack it high, sell it cheap. Aye. Yeah, it, or it didn't matter if you were like the most prestigious salon in the country. All of your unique selling points disappeared. And all the thing that we focused on was, are you using PPE? Is the salon spotless? Are the team well drilled? And then doing great hair. That was, you know, so there's no unique selling point because every salon in the street should have been doing the exact same. Uh, our service, in terms of what we like to offer, that was dismissed, discounted and stuff. So it's a really interesting time because you're looking at a sort of business model now where you go, well, actually, whilst it's not pre-COVID levels for us, there is a level of consistency and that just comes down to the sort of hard work and effort from all the team yeah yeah for sure and i really love that no uh judgment sentiment it is it's nice just to live your life by really actually isn't it if we could all just do that i know it's not easy we all have bad days when we're judgy but yeah and we are going to see when we reopen again, I'm sure people will have played with, with box dyes again or had a go at their yeah. fringe and things like that. So I, I think it's really still very relevant. Um, just to move finally then, and it is kind of taking into consideration this whole no judgment idea, is what would you guys, from a stylist point of view, Kate, where you're going to be obviously off the floor if you guys do um, enter a lockdown, um, and then from your point of view, Colin, as the MD, what would you say are the two key things that we can kind of end on that you would say, you know, if you're going to, because because you guys are going into another lockdown and we probably are, what are the two key things you guys would say, uh, you know, advice to do while you're off work, okay, not cutting hair and colouring hair. And then also, um, Colin, from a planning point of view as, as a leader of a salon a salon group, should we start with you, Kate? It's like, what are the two things you, you would say? Oh, it's a difficult one because everybody has different experiences during lockdown. But I mean, I know that obviously, Wella, there's if you wanted to kind of broaden your knowledge, Wella, I've got their courses and things that you could possibly do. Um, I know I did a couple. I did the barbicide course as well during the first lockdown. So furthering your education, even though you're not in the salon, could be quite a good thing to do. Um, I would also maybe say as well, just there. You've, there's nothing that you can really advise anybody to do because everybody does things differently but definitely going out for walks every day really helped me and just like you know the, being able to actually get a bit of fresh air and although we we can't all be together as a team communicate with each other you know we had our um weekly team meetings with like our, our own teams on zoom and sometimes there would be a few bottles of wine that would that would uh... <laughs> bring the fun yeah 
yeah but it was it was good because I think it keeps that social aspect going so definitely stay sociable if you can do some at-home education just to kind of broaden your mind a little bit um, and just make sure that you're getting out and getting your fresh air and having a wander clearing your yeah. head yeah and being kind to yourself I guess is the most important thing you know again going back to no judgment you don't have to be major productive in a lockdown like you don't have to go through well as I the whole of our IGTV and watch everything you know but it's there if you want to and that makes you feel great and still engaged and like you're building your capability and keeping in touch with the industry and what's going on but like you said as well like if you want to just go for walks or or just do a bit of self-care because we all know December, if we can open, is going to be absolutely crazy. So take that time, right, to do what makes you feel great. Definitely. And you never get that time again. I know that everybody was saying during the first lockdown, we'll never have this time off. And I'm thinking I should have booked a holiday to Thailand and gone travel. But, you know, it's not that type of, you know, time off. It's it's unfortunately trying times and just do whatever you can to keep yourself motivated and, and obviously keep your brain going at the same time. And your body moving yeah for sure Colin for you yeah. well I mean I, you know I would back up everything Kate's just said there as well um, and I think you know just from a business point of view I think um, just plan be focused and um, you know if, if if we all share the same date of the 2nd of December which is what England is doing you know make sure that from the 3rd of December to Christmas Eve that there's no sort of mishaps and there's no um, days that you think, well, actually, I should have had that. You know, I think now's the time to communicate with the team. And, you know, certainly January will probably be a more challenging January than normal. So maybe some of the team will be quite happy to come in and, you know, have less days off in December and more days off in January. So just have this conversation, you know, don't, you know, we, we can't force it. But we can certainly have the conversation and say, well, maybe guys, we want to work every Sunday, and, but, you know, we can give it all back. For most salons and for most team members, that would be a win-win because there's commission and time back, so it's almost like double time. So, yeah. you know, it'd be pretty good. Um, and I think, you know, um, from a salon owner's point of view, just take care of yourself a bit. You know, um, I sort of know if we go into a four-week lockdown what my four-week lockdown looks like for me personally. Yeah. Uh, week one is painting two salons, and then week two, three, and four is doing nothing. Is really just sort of looking after myself and and um, just breathing and sort of making sure that the stresses that, that we've encountered are sort of left behind a little bit. You know, that's um, one of the greatest things out of lockdown for me has been. Um, reconnecting with sleep. Uh, prior to lockdown, um, quite unhealthily for a good few years, I, I slept atrociously. The, the two weeks up to lockdown were horrendous. I mean, I was pretty much two to three hours sleep a, a day. Yeah. Um, and then honestly, as soon as within about 10 days of lockdown, I'd sort of re- reset my, my brain and and my sort of body, and, and now, and I, and I fight for that, you know, so I, I don't let the stresses of every day now affect me as much as I used to, and it, that's genuine, it's not me saying it because I believe it's hippie spiritual or anything, I, I genuinely have found a way to cope better with the stresses of the business, yeah. um, and really just sort of, and I try and protect that now, um, yeah. you know, I think... Um, maybe been guilty in the past of giving too much away yeah. and I think you know I still I think it's clear in my chat today but I still think like my message to business owners specifically would be look after yourself you know you've done an incredible job in an incredibly challenging time if you're still operating you've made decisions that have impacted and affected so many people and I would imagine you've done them with the sort of best will in your heart so you can only take sort of kudos from that and respect you know I would have I have nothing but respect for every single business owner right now and um, because it's it's unprecedented challenge and time and if you've got through it well done and if you've not got through it don't take it personally no. because the situation we've, we found ourselves in was I mean it was just a it was just a car crash you know so um, that that's my thing I think you know a little bit of 
I, I'm all about the team, I'm, you know, genuinely. But I think actually, if you have a team management, whatever, just give yourself a little pat on the back yeah. and enjoy this little mini lockdown um, yeah. because it might just help us have a better future in, in your short term future anyway. And it sounds like basically what you're saying is if you don't look after yourself, you can't look after everybody else in, in your salon or your team or your group of salons, right? You need to be at, at, at your best or try to be as much at your best. And if that could be something as simple as, I just need an extra hour's sleep every night and I'll yeah. be able to hopefully be in that better mindset to tackle yet again uncharted waters we've never, yeah. none of us have ever lived through before. So I think that's really nice advice. Just get some extra shut eye. Yeah, yeah, it's so important. It's so, so important. important. Yeah, for sure. Great. Well, thank you guys so much for that. Um, it's been great chatting to you both and hearing it from from, from both sides, really. Um, and I just wish you guys all the best of luck with the next, you know, I mean, even week, yeah, <laughs> two yeah, weeks, yeah. six months, <laughs> the rest of your lives. Um and I think it's just important that I just love every time I go onto Instagram, I'm seeing all the time about the storm and, you know, the boat and we are all in this storm together. And I think, yeah. you know, we are, we are in such, I know you guys both feel the same way. We're in such an amazing industry that's only become closer, I think, since yeah. all of this has, this has happened. And it's really nice what you said, Colin, about everything that Wella are doing, because obviously we're like every supplier, we're working really, really hard at the moment right. to give you guys what you need, the support, even if that's a phone call every day, if that's, IGTV different uploads every day we, we really are trying to be there for you guys um because like I said it's, unless you guys do been, well we don't do well it's really important yeah. for us so it's nice to hear that it, it's been really appreciated and it, it's a it's a heartfelt thanks you know I think uh, you know the, the the change was was really good and really noticeable for, from my point of view Fab. good great well thank you ever so much guys I think we're going to have a look at some diamonds of the day my favorite slide just to sum it all up because we have talked a lot we have covered a lot um but yeah number one there go with the flow and stay calm you know be more pirate be more colin maybe try and uh, roll with the punches a bit because we don't know about lockdown two and how long it's going you don't know you guys don't know if you're going to have one in scotland and then for the rest of us ireland wales um uk we you know nothing certain at the moment so try try and go with the flow and stay calm we aren't all in the same boat. We're in the same storm, 100%. This is a storm, <laughs> this whole coronavirus pandemic we're going through. Um, and I think sometimes, yeah, it's nice to feel that, that that we're all in this together, which I know is a phrase that's been coined for a long time now, for months and months, but it, it is nice. If you just want to breathe at the end of the day, remember, it, it, it doesn't matter how much money your business has got, or whatever, you know, how many stylists who are staying and that kind of thing. It, it really is about the fact that we're just all in this really these really trying times and um, I think it's really important to remember that filter the media and look after the team yeah I think it is about filtering what the the media are saying because it is like you said Colin it's really sensationalized some of it we don't even know what the sources are sometimes so it's trying to keep the team grounded in grounded in this is your reality as an employee at our salon um, and I think that's really really important for the team um, be More Pirate by Sam Conniff. So obviously Google that if you are listening now, if you'd like to hear a little bit more about um, what Colin was talking about, about being a bit more pirate, then do have a Google and a, a read of that. Education reinforces stylist potential, 100%. Like it really does set you apart. And Wella, obviously you guys have said it, we always try and produce amazing education for you and update it all the time. And it really does set you apart from um, other stylists um, if you can do that and put the time in. And if you can do that over lockdown, great. If you're not in that headspace where you don't want to do that, then fine, look after yourself. Um, and introducing this no judgment policy, which Colin's talked about before, Rob talks about it a lot. I just think it's a great one to try and live by. But like I said earlier, we all have our off days, especially at the moment. Um, but yeah, if we can try and live by that, I think we'll be all the better for it. So thank you ever so much, everyone, for joining us today. Thank you, Colin and Kate. It's been amazing chatting to you. And we will see you next time as we will be doing some more Business Network Live in conversation with series. And we would love you guys to tune into those. Thank you ever so much. Speak to you guys later. Take thank care. Thanks for having us. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> Two amazing days together. Wow.
well, it's been fantastic. It's a wonderful event, a wonderful venue.